very much for the kind uh, invitation and uh, I'm very pleased to be here at this wonderful place. Um, I was, indeed, I was uh, in the pioneering time of uh, lung confrontation. I was at Washington University, worked with Joel Cooper, uh, but I did not train at the Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center. I was a visiting professor uh, and spending some time uh, in this stage. Uh, recently, I was initially also a visiting professor at Harvard. Uh, David Sugarbaker invited me there. Um, your title is Transition from EPP to Pleurectomy Decortication, One Surgeon's Experience. In fact, it uh, should be more what did I learn in the past 15 years, me and my entire group, because it's not a surgeon. What is absolutely correct, when I started and went into uh, mesothelioma uh, research and uh, treatment, uh, uh, I, we had uh, still this um, belief that the disease of me uh, mesothelioma is unaffected by current therapeutic maneuvers. This was stated in 1988, but uh, even in the year 2000, this was a kind of the opinion. And I thought this was unacceptable and started a program in uh, 2000, which was neoadjuvant chemotherapy, followed by EPP, and variably radiotherapy. Why did I do this? Uh, at that time, it was shown that gemcitabine was active in approximately 40% of the patients before we did not have a chemotherapy available. And I thought neoadjuvant uh, is better than adjuvant because you can treat all the patients you get the activity at the outer border of the mesothelioma, and since mesothelioma is a, a, a disease which grows diffusely, I thought this is a good idea, and it was uh, the same as uh, we applied in locally advanced non-small cell lung cancer. And we did a pilot study in Zurich, 20 patients, median survival time was 20, uh, months and uh, zero surgical mortality. So we thought this was a very good start. And then it was followed by a multicenter study which confirmed this uh, concept. And then later the European uh, organization, AORTC, did a study uh, exactly the same concept which we pioneered some years before. And Lee Krugend in the United States, they did the same, uh, showing similar results. But uh, what is the problem? The problem today is no longer if we provide active treatment, but still we are not sure how aggressive the treatment should be, since still now we have not a, a relevant breakthrough. We made some ex uh, advantages. And what is the problem? The problem is that none of the disease, as which I, malignant disease I know, that the heterogeneity of mesothelioma is really diverse. And, it did, and surgical or clinical staging, as shown here, two different types. Clinical staging does not match to pathological staging. We are practically, it's practically unable to define the T stage on CT scan, on MRI, or on PET scan. It's impossible. And uh, furthermore, the uh, biological behavior of the tumor can be very diverse. And I want to show you this in two examples. And this should also be a little bit an explanation to the question before, why don't we do randomized studies in these patients? Uh, the problem is really it's an orphan disease, it's a rare disease, and the biological behavior is completely different. I'll show you two examples. Both are ladies around 50, 60 years old, and both had epithelial mesothelioma. Oh. Okay. This patient had some disease, little disease in the right side, uh, and it is a nodular disease. She had previous, uh, um, uh, a previous infection, and therefore, 
she had a fused uh, chest cavity, but you can see clearly see some nodular aspects. And she was diagnosed as a T2 tumor, uh, underwent UN chemotherapy with CISPAM, which was our standard, and she did extremely well. 5.5 years later, no sign of recurrence of metastasis. She did very good. But soon thereafter, she had a local recurrence, which came very fast and aggressive. She received second-line chemotherapy, uh, local radiotherapy, and then later died, uh, mainly because of local disease. The other case, 60-year-old female, she had also epithelial mesothelioma, also very little disease as the other lady on the right side with a pleural effusion. I selected two cases with relatively small amount of disease. But here we did not have the nodular aspect. This was completely diffuse, scattered tumor on the pleura. In this lady, we decided we do a pleurectomy decortication, uh, and uh, she did well. But uh, not surprisingly, she had uh, some recurrence on this side. Uh, she progressed, she received chemotherapy, and then she developed uh, on a tumor on the contralateral side. I don't know if this is progression of the disease, which would have come automatically, or if this is uh, metastasis, but a completely different biological behavior. And I don't think it has to do with EPP or with pleurectomy decortication. It's just a different case. So in the contralateral side, she had these small nodules, which did not have the other lady. So what can we learn from this case? Two ladies, same age, same diagnosis, epithelial tumor, T2 and 0, but completely different biological behavior. So how can we uh, um, advise patients when we see them for the first time? So let me go back to my talk. I will talk, um, I will you know, jump over since a lot of things has been covered by David Cameron before, but I will focus on multimodality treatment, patient selection, and what we are currently doing, mainly in uh, our center and in Europe, and what I learned in the past. Uh, we have learned there are two main procedures. It's extrapleural pleurectomy, pleurectomy decortication, and I uh, fully agree with the definition. It's the extended form or the uh, um, uh, and then there is partial pleurectomy, which is not a, a complete uh, uh, resection. Um, the nomic, I will not go through this. We had this in the previous talk, but I just want to show those who are not surgeons the problem of this resection when we do pleurectomy decortication. You can see here the, the lungs. Uh, is this the pointer? Yeah the lungs and the parietal pleura. This is just peeled off. In the parietal pleura, it's the tumor. We peel this off from the lung surface. So in contrast to all other um, surgery we do for oncological reasons, we have always a, a, a margin, a, a safety margin. Impossible in mesothelioma, and this is why maybe pleurectomy decortication, the extended form, is comparably good than uh, a, 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 an extra pleural pneumonectomy, since we leave anyway cells behind. And I agree with uh, what uh, just was, has been said. Uh, surgery is always an R1 resection. This is another uh, picture where the tumor load and the tumor burden in the pleura is uh, even higher. And then uh, um, we heard some data before what, uh, why was uh, EPP controversially discussed. It was not only the MARS-1 trial, it was also uh, other um, uh, groups and teams were very critical about EPP. Why were they critical? I think one of the criticism is 
that surgical mortality was as high as 20 or 12 percent. In the Mars trial, which was not designed for an actual randomized trial, it's completely underpowered. What was not mentioned is that in the EPP arm, they had this 18 percent surgical mortality, 18 percent. And uh, if you have such a high surgical mortality, you should not do this procedure. But it has also been shown that in experienced uh, centers uh, that you can pro pro uh, perform this procedure with a surgical mortality between 2 and 5%. In fact, we have a 90-day surgical mortality below 5%, even after neoadjuvant treatment. But also the range of the morbidity is huge. Overall survival is reported more or less around 20 months. Uh, 20 to 22 months are the majority of the st study. And uh, uh, quality of life has been shown in many studies can be approved after three to six months postoperatively in these patients, but it has a lot to do with patient selection. <clears throat> We heard this meta-analysis from Cow. We heard this before, uh, and if you compare, um, uh, just just a, just a different way to show what we have learned. The stage is generally more advanced in EPP than extended pleurectomy decortication. The perioperative mortality is lower. The post-operative mortality is lower for uh, extended pleurectomy decortication, and overall survival has a trend to be uh, slightly better, but it's not, uh, as mentioned before, not really comparable. But uh, since EPP is not strikingly better, we really have to ask our question, why don't we do uh, not uh, a lung-preserving procedure uh, as uh, discussed before. And we ask our, we have seen this uh, median survival, uh, again, uh, slightly lower for EPP uh, uh, than for pleurectomy decortication. However, this could be also a selection bias. Um, <clears throat> for many, many years, we did consequently new adjuvant treatment followed by EPP. But uh, in the last uh, couple years, we started to do uh, also pleurectomy, extended pleurectomy decortication, including the diaphragm and the uh, um, pericardium. And the overall survival is trying to be better for uh, pleurectomy decortication. Freedom from recurrence, not surprisingly, is about the same. Um, uh, and a few words to palliative surgery. Uh, it was mentioned that uh, partial pleurectomy decortication can be used for palliation, for effusion control, to free entrapped lungs. Uh, and uh, the other procedure could be talc pleurodesis. And more and more we use these uh, inveling catheters to control recurrence. In uh, uh, England, they did a randomized study looking uh, at the uh, palliative effect of cytoreactive uh, reductive pleurectomy and compared it to talc pleurodesis. 120 patients were randomized either in uh, partial pleurectomy decortication or talc, uh, and these are the results. They did not find a significant difference in overall survival, however, those who had a surgical uh, uh, treatment, the pleural, uh, pleural effusion control was significantly better, and this resulted also in a better quality of life, probably mainly because the, the effusion control was much better, and this was recently published in the Lancet by the Mesovats group from England. So what are the considerations for the choice of surgery today? We still do not have a standard recommendation for surgery. And uh, in general, it is a trend to extended pleurectomy decortication in most centers, including ours. 
but I would not say EPP is finished uh, for, uh, for all patients. I think there are some cases we still would favor an EPP over pleurectomy decortication, and I will show you some of the details. Of course, the functional uh, uh, assessment is important. The performance status, the patient's wish, the extent of the tumor load, and what kind of uh, other treatment plans, we all have to take this into consideration. Um, this was mentioned before. It was a, a, a statement after the IMIC meeting two, three years ago that cytoreactive surgery still plays a role, despite we do not have a randomized study for proving this, and not only surgeons were authors of this uh, statements. There were also some relevant oncolo uh, oncologists on this uh, statement uh, paper. A few words to uh, chemotherapy. <clears throat> Still, th we do not have an, e uh, an excellent uh, chemotherapy. Uh, the response rate is anything between 30 and 40 percent. Standard is cisplatin plus uh, antifoliate, uh, in general, Pemetrex at uh, Alinta. Uh, but there are other drugs which were equally good, like gemcitabine, a little bit more toxic, but equally good in uh, the efficiency. And venerobine uh, is another um, possibility. We selected induction treatment because we expected some downstaging. Uh, we thought that the resection margins will be better and we could apply the full dose and, uh, for the initial treatment and also could select patients uh, who were, had special uh, aggressive tumors. Those who were rapidly progressive did not uh, uh, profit from surgery, which I will show you later in our overall analysis in, on patient selection. Uh, the disadvantage is um, it might have increased the surgical mortality, not really proven, but uh, possible. And some delay of surgery is also always, was always an ar uh, argument from David Sugarbaker. So what are the data and what have we seen? Uh, in the, and uh, we had 128 patients analyzed and 92 underwent uh, induction treatment and an EPP. And those who had response to uh, chemotherapy, the line in black, compared to the line uh, in red, had a median survival, which was uh, 22 months, uh, uh, the whole entire group, but had a median survival time of 25 months compared to 20 months, those who did not respond to uh, chemotherapy and the uh, uh, <clears throat> recurrence-free survival did, it was also different. Um, there were a few patients who had really a good response to chemotherapy as shown in this uh, slide, uh, pre-chemo, post-chemo, um, very good response. This is the exception. Only about 10% had really a strong response like this. Um, <clears throat> we were asking also the question, what is the role of radiotherapy uh, in the adjuvant setting? Um, in the literature, the benefit is unclear. We have some studies, for example, from the Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center, favoring hemithoracic radiation despite the, uh, the morbidity and even some mortality is around. Uh, it has been shown to reduce some local recurrence rate, but if you want to do a, a hemithoracic uh, radiation, it's a big target volume, uh, and, but it's good for palliative uh, control. Um, <clears throat> in Switzerland, we did a randomized study looking at this question, and uh, this study was finished now uh, six or eight months ago, and is under review for publication, but I show you now the data. The trial design had two parts. The first part was 
chemotherapy, cisplatin pemetrexate, followed by EPP surgery. And then patients were reassessed. Those who had an R2 resection went to follow up. And only those who had an R1, 0 to R1 resection, basically all had an R1 resection, they were randomized in either control or hemithoracic radiation. Hemithoracic radiation was 46 gray uh, to the hemithorax and mediastinal nodes, and the boost to areas were, uh, uh, we thought uh, they are at special risk and were marked. So there was a total dose of 56 gray. We were somehow disappointed when we uh, analyzed the data. Uh, <clears throat> in red are, is the control arm, and in black the re hemithoracic radiation arm. And if we look at the overall uh, median overall survival rate, no statistical difference uh, in this uh, group. Uh, this is the local, re I'm sorry, this is the local regional uh, relapse free survival. There was a slight trend that the hemithoracic radiation is better uh, over, uh, and if we looked at the overall survival, there is a trend to better survival for the surgical treatment arm 28, but no statistical difference. So basically, by adding hemithoracic radiation after EPP, we did not find uh, an advantage in the uh, or median overall survival. And uh, <clears throat> the summary which, uh, of this study is it's the largest prospective trial uh, at, uh, looking at this question. And uh, EPP of the uh, chemotherapy was possible. 74.8% uh, had an R1 resection, and this was achieved in 63% of the patients. The 30 and 60 day postoperative mortality was 4 and 8%. Uh, it, uh, remember, it's a multi center study and not a single center study. However, we selected only experienced centers. The local regional relapse free survival in both uh, arms were uh, 7.6 and 9.4 uh, months. This is hemithoracic radiation. Uh, and um, which was statistically not different. And the median over sur uh, all survival was also about the same. So we did not meet the primary endpoint uh, of this study, and uh, this was uh, the result. I'm uh, interested to hear from our radiotherapy specialist that he will comment uh, on uh, the study here. <clears throat> when I reviewed our activity and look back and ask a question, what did we really learn after 15 years of neoadjuvant chemotherapy and EPP, uh, I wanted to find out, can we counsel patients better after this enormous experience? And if I look at just the CT scan and the single uh, parameters, we cannot counsel them better. But we looked at four parameters which are available before surgery. We looked at uh, non-epithelial histotype. We looked at C-reactive pr uh, protein. We looked at volumetry. Uh, measured on this CT scan by uh, a software. And we looked at progression uh, after induction treatment. Each of this item gets a point. And uh, if those who had a zero score, the median overall survival is 32 months. And if those who had three or four scores, they did extremely poorly, despite we did neoadjuvant 
and extraplural human activity, telling us that EPP cannot be a rescue procedure. Uh, those who have poor parameters on the forehand, they should not undergo such a procedure, and only those who have better scores can be treated that way. Um, we confirmed this in a small cohort in Vienna and found exactly the same trend. Zero score, pretty good uh, median overall survival, and those who had score three, they had, they had a much smaller cohort, uh, especially for volumetry, but those who had uh, did not do better. We did the same also for, and we compared our score with the ERTC score, uh, and our score is clearly much better than the ARTC score to predict prognosis when we use these four parameters. Uh, I, we did the same also for pleurectomy decortication, uh, and, for, and there it works the same. So <clears throat> I come to my last topic. Uh, what, how can we improve local tumor control? We did the randomized study with radiotherapy, but there are other possibilities, such as intracavitary chemotherapy, intracavitary immunotherapy, uh, and photodynamic therapy. In our lab, we developed a technique where we were able to load fibrin with high-dose cisplatin, which we can um, spray on the surface uh, of the lungs and on the chest. And I want to uh, show you the current study what we do. Currently, our procedure of choice is induction treatment followed by pleurectomy, extended pleurectomy decortication. And only a few of the patients go into the arm of EPP, those uh, which end up with a practically destroyed uh, lung parenchyma after pleurectomy decortication, and we have such cases. And then patients receive this intracavitary cisplatin fibrin, which means we spray fibrin loaded with high-dose cisplatin on the chest cavity and on the lung surface. If the lung is not there, it's just the ca chest cavity. And uh, could you show quickly the movie uh, here? Uh, this is a, a lung uh, after pleurectomy decortication and the chest wall, and this is our catheter. And you can see we can spray this fibrin here uh, on the surface of the chest wall, on the surface of the lungs. And we just finished now a phase two study showing that the concentration of cisplatin in the tissue was extremely high uh, after this procedure, and we did not have uh, any systemic side effects. The uh, <clears throat> ERTC in Europe is performing currently another study. They look, uh, in, in their study, all patients undergo a pleurectomy decortication but either they receive neoadjuvant or adjuvant uh, chemotherapy. This is another study which, going, which is going on currently in, uh, in Europe. Uh, as you see, they have not even foreseen uh, EPP uh, in this study. And then the MARS-2 uh, is a feasibility study. They uh, uh, want to find out if uh, patients who have undergo pleurectomy decortication um, versus uh, uh, no surgery, extended pleurectomy decortication versus no surgery. Uh, they tried to do another uh, randomized study. Uh, it, was, it failed for EPP. They tried to do this again. It's the MARS-2 feasibility study. I come to an end of my talk. I have 20 seconds left. Um, <laughs> The best survival is still shown in patients who undergo multimodality treatment.
This can be either EPP or extended chlorectomy decortication. It is not clear if chemotherapy should be given new or adjuvant. I prefer new adjuvant for some arguments I have given to you. Uh, radiotherapy. Um, we failed to demonstrate that hemithoracic radiation therapy after EPP gives us uh, survival benefit. Uh, and the surgical procedure should be selected on different uh, um, um, clinical parameters, not just one parameter. And the institutional uh, experience plays an enormous role, and all these patients, also pleurectomy decortication, should be at centers of high expertise where a multi uh, uh, group, uh, a larger group is doing uh, uh, research together and select patients and I'm uh, very pleased to have such a, a very strong team. My own research team, especially Isabel Opitz, uh, is um, doing uh, outstanding research. She's doing now the, um, the um, influence meso study with fibrin cisplatin. Uh, we have a strong radiology, pathology, and oncology department and radiotherapy department. So thank you very much for your attention. <clears throat>